Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a knife that I have wanted to get under the camera for a very long time now. So we're going to take a look at a Shirogorov. And, uh, you know, Shirogorov um, kind of came on the knife scene a couple years ago. Um, they were being imported from Russia through one dealer exclusively. There's a lot of a drama kind of surrounding the, you know, the initial release of these knives. There was a lot of excitement, um, a lot of insane prices. Things are starting to come down a bit more now, but um, anyways, this one's on loan from Bobby over at BT Blades, so I'll put his uh, channel up here so you guys can go check him out if you want to. Um, but anyways, thanks Bobby for letting me borrow this one. It is his favorite knife, and I've had it for a few weeks, so I do feel bad about that. So let's get into it. This is the Shirogorov 95T, and uh, T, I believe, is for turtle there, because this has that turtle pattern on it. Um, but again, I've, I've been excited to check these out. As far as my... We'll, we'll go through the specs, overall impressions, and details. First, here's what it ships with. Just a standard black box. You can see the logo kind of... Uh, not imprinted, but... I don't know, protruding a bit on there. So, it's a, it's a bear or a Russian bear logo. So spec wise, um, let's uh, let's get into the specs real quick. And for size comparison, the uh, ZT 0562CF. Uh, this one's a little bit longer here. Anyways, so the specs on the Shiro, we're looking at a blade length of just about 3.9 inches, a handle length of about 4.9, so that uh, blade to handle ratio is excellent on this knife. The handle thickness in the pocket there is about 0 0.48 inches. And then this one weighs in at 5.1 ounces. So, yeah, those are the specs for the most part. Again, next to the 0562, it's a little bit longer. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. Thickness is, uh, I believe this one is, they're about the same. This one might be a little bit thicker, but... Alright, that's it for the specs, I guess. We'll just leave it at that. Overall impressions, uh, to be quite honest, um, I always felt that these knives were hyped quite a bit, um, you know, just based on the prices and the exclusivity factor and yada, yada, yada. Um, I felt that these knives were overhyped, um, but I was curious. I wanted to check one out. And um, as far as my overall impressions go, I, I have to admit that um, this is one of the nicest production knives that I've ever handled. And so while I don't love how expensive they still are, um, I think it's an exceptional knife. Very, very well made. Incredible action. Uh, just great workmanship, great detail. Um, I can see why these are so popular. And we'll, we'll get into the specifics. We'll talk about the different grades, the different types of Shirogorovs that are out there. But um, yeah, the, there is no hype. I mean, they really are exceptional. They really are exceptional knives. Um, are they overpriced? Yeah, I, I think they still are, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later here. So, all right, that's it for the specs and the overall impressions. Um, for those of you who want to stick around, let's get into it. So first, let's talk about, um, let's just go kind of over the basic things that I typically neglect. Centering is perfect. Lockup is um, maybe 40 or 50 percent there. Um, completely solid, no wiggle whatsoever. I've got fingerprints on this thing now. Um, it's got a really, really nice, really fine kind of stone wash here on this one, so it does pick up fingerprints a little bit. Let's wipe that off. All right. Uh, action. Let's take a look at the action. Now this is one of the smoothest knives that I've ever held. Um, and I don't say that just because the blade falls closed. There are a lot of knives where the blade will fall closed, but it's that I feel absolutely no friction uh, as the blade falls closed. It's, you know, it's like a, a marble on glass kind of. So that's what's uh, quite exceptional about the action is you just don't feel it. Um, deployment speed and everything, um, fantastic. Uh, this isn't a knife that I've been able to fail, uh, get to purposely fail deployment. I mean, a few, 
even if you try to half ass it, if it breaks the detent, it's opening up completely. So um, incredibly smooth, no friction, um, superb action, uh, low profile flipper tab with a little bit of texturing. You can slip on it, but if you hit the texturing right, you won't slip at all. So, all right, let's talk about the blade. So Shiro Goro, for the most part, does um, full flat grinds or flat grinds. Some of the, I think I've seen some of the other ones in the custom division that maybe use, um, there might be a few variances. I think I've seen a few Scandi grinds and a few other things, but by and large, uh, full flat grind or flat grind. Um, so pretty consistent in terms of the grinds and the application. Another thing that I think Shergoroff does well, and this might be by virtue of there being only one or two designers, um, as you guys may have heard, one of the Shergoroff brothers passed away in a car accident in 2015. Um, and so there's only, um, potentially, I don't know quite the details, but there's one brother left who's, uh, I guess, in charge of the company. Um, I think it's, I think it's Sergey, but, you know, don't quote me on that, um, that's simply what I've heard. Anyhow, so being being that there's one or were two designers, um, the designs have a um, a great consistency, a great familiarity. If you think about companies like Chris Reeve, Chris Reeve Knives or maybe Hinder or Strider, but more Chris Reeve, knife to knife, you have the same basic formula with slight differences. With Shiro Goroff, I think it's kind of similar, maybe a bit more in terms of differences between knife to knife, but there's a, a an excellent consistency. So if someone buys one and they like it, they know if they buy another model, they're going to like that one too. Um, I think that's something that Shiro Goroff does um, in an excellent format. And again, it might be more contingent upon the fact that there's one designer in charge of the company versus companies like Custom Knife Factory or Spyderco or Kaiser other companies that work with uh, quite a few different designers where there's more variability in the lineup as opposed to just straight consistency. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense, but uh, a wonderful consistency to their designs. Um, this one does have that full flat grind, and this one is done in M390. So as far as the 95 T's go, uh, this is probably would be my optimum setup. Uh, it does have Ball bearings. It do, is done in a full flat grind with M390, a nice, really high polished stone wash here on it. Um, yeah, really, really exceptional. So, again, there's that insane action. And again, it's not that it fall, falls closed, it's that it, there's no friction. You don't even feel the blade moving. Some jimping up top, nice and clean. Uh, consistent and thin works well um, works well so again and then the flipper tab um, if you don't hit the jimping you can slip on the top part there but if you get your finger on the jimping usually no problem so now the uh, tang of the blade is rounded where it makes contact with the very large stop pin there so should be long wearing got a little bit of gook on there and yeah, that's it for the, I guess, the blade. Now the pivot is done, um, kind of an interesting pivot. Uh, it's unique, it's custom hardware, but it will work with a flathead screwdriver, which is really cool. Um, I haven't needed to touch this one. I flipped it quite a bit, but it's, it's remained true to center um, despite playing with it so much. And then as you can see, there is some chamfering here on the inside where you flip so that uh, you don't abuse your finger. Um, and while we're on that subject, the entire knife is really nicely rounded or contoured or the edges are softened, so there's no hot spots, no sharp points on the knife at all. There's a bit more uh, work done here on the inside so you can disengage it without any problem. And the it's kind of interesting, but there's not a lot of strength here on the lock bar. Like it's not difficult to disengage in the slightest, but with with as consistent and as hard as this thing flips and the fact that you can't half-ass it, usually what I've seen with most knives is they have a really strong amount of pressure on the lock bar in order to achieve that. But this one, um, it's easy to disengage. It doesn't have a lot of lock bar pressure, but you still get that insane action. Um, and again, that's one thing that makes it quite 
Um, you know, the reason that I say that there is no hype and the, the craftsmanship and the quality is exceptional. Um, one of the nicest production knives I've ever handled without question. So now the handle, this is the 95T. So there are 95 nudists that don't have this machining, but um, I think the T or the turtle pattern here is really cool. Um, it's enough that it, the, the mill work here is enough that it adds texture so that you don't feel like you're going to slip on it. But there's, again, there's no sharp edges here at all. Um, a lot of nice, nice work throughout the handle. There is a stainless steel lock insert, of course, to, you know, prevent any lock stick and extend the life of the contact face. Same type of hardware here on the standoff. Another thing really cool about the standoff is, I don't know if you guys can see, but they actually milled down into the titanium so the standoff could sit in the titanium, not simply on the titanium. And what that does is that helps prevent it from coming loose. Um, it doesn't require a really, really tight fit to keep it from moving. So um, when you have one standoff, that's a really nice detail to incorporate. So as you can see, the blade comes all the way to the end. You can't snag it at all, though, and uh, really utilizing that blade to handle ratio. So pocket clip is also exceptional carries the same design and millwork of the handles, um, enough of a lip to get in the pocket without any problems and then plenty of gap for thick jeans. So aside from that, it looks exceptional. Doesn't irritate the hand in the slightest, even if you're really bearing down on it, you can't even feel it. So again, just a, an exceptional pocket clip to add to uh, the exceptional knife. And the lock bar is raised a little bit as compared to the show side. So again, it's easy to get to that lock bar, as you can see. Extra large hands. Uh, get a full grip with just a little bit poking out of the side there. But really, really good fit in my hand. Feels excellent. Um, really good ergos. It's not... You know, it's not like insane, like you don't feel like the knife will ever slip, but... Um, a lot of confidence in the grip, especially when you add in the nice jimping on top, so Yeah Quite exceptional. All right now that we've gone over this knife in detail. Let's talk about Shirogorov a bit more um, So as you guys know, it is a company out of Russia um, The knives are said to be made in-house and if you're not aware Shirogorov has a sub forum on the USN usual suspect network website uh, that you can go in and they have shop picks um, and then one interesting thread in there is they actually go over the differences between the different types of Shirogorov knives so this one is part of their uh, serial knives which is their basic configuration kind of mass produced um, they are you know they're not numbered they're kind of the plain Jane but they're still again I think this one's exceptional so the they're mass produced um, Although there's quite a bit of handwork, they say, and honestly, I believe that with how nice everything feels and how well it's executed. And then the, the blades are supposedly hand ground as well. And so that's what part of the um, serialized numbers are. Oh, I also failed to tell you guys about the one-sided lanyard hole here. So, quick note. Anything else that I missed? No. Okay. So again, that's part of the serial line or the, the basic entry level. Next, you step up to custom division. And custom division, they take the um, basic serial knives and then they do some special work to them. Might be different types of finishes. Maybe it's a two-tone finish on the blade. Uh, maybe some different uh, finishes on the handles. Maybe some rare or more uh, exclusive materials incorporated like... Oh, I don't know, Timascus, who knows, uh, something like that. Um, now, once you step into the custom division, all the knives begin are now serialized that uh, so they can track how, you know, who made it and when. They do go from, like, your basic ball bearing system to uh, roller bearing system, single roller bearing system, which is uh, seems like a really cool uh, pivot system. Uh, honestly, I can't imagine anything being better than this one, though. I mean, it's... It's exceptional. So, but, um, but you know, as far as geeking out on new pivot systems, they use uh, roller bearings as opposed to ball bearings. It's cool. There's no question. Um, you also have the, 
uh, and all the work is done by a single person. Uh, one individual craftsman does the upgrades to the knife. So that's that's the custom division. Then you jump into Sergei Shirogorov's full customs, which are you know even more interesting materials. They use the multi-row roller bearings. Um, they have the custom screws they call the duck foot, and apparently each knife can take a month to make. So this is information you can find on their sub form. I'm just sharing it with you guys. Now, um, what are my qualms with Shirov knives? Really, the only qualm is the price. And I'm not going to say that this isn't worth what the price that it commands, but for example, this configuration of this knife is going to be probably at least 700, maybe to 750 or so, maybe 780. So it's an extremely expensive production line knife. Now, again, exceptionally well made. But my, I think my biggest issue is in Russia, apparently these knives are more in like the high fours. Here, by the time they get to the U.S., they're the high sevens. And so that's, I mean, I, I understand a little bit of markup to come overseas, but that's, an ex, that's quite a huge markup for a production line knife. So that's kind of where I have issues with the system, not necessarily the brand or the knife. Um, then once you get into the custom division, those go to... Uh, I mean, at least a thousand, probably closer to fifteen hundred. Um, I've seen them go all the way up to five thousand for some of the different custom. Maybe I think some of the custom vision went up that much. Anyways, extremely expensive. That's my point. I have not seen any full custom Shirogorovs, Sergei Shirogorovs, for sale, but I can only imagine those are um, even above and beyond those price points. So, uh, you know, definitely outside of my realm of possibility. Anyways, that's really my only issue with the knife, is just how much of a markup they're getting. Um, whether or not it's worth it to you at that price point, that's definitely your call. Um, but I, I, I do want to get a Shiro at some point. I mean, there's really no if, and, or buts. It's just a matter of when, and hopefully the prices come down a bit more. Things have gotten better as um, a new distributor has picked them up, which is Recon 1 out of Southern California. And now you do have guys on the forums in Russia who are buying these knives and then turning around and selling them to the U.S. market for less than the, the dealer's command. So it's getting a little bit better, but still expensive. You still have to consider sending the knife overseas for warranty work, which can be dangerous and expensive. Um, assuming they need it, I'm not sure that this one ever would, to be honest with you. But anyways, that's pretty much it for kind of the overview of this knife. Uh, thanks again to Bobby for letting me borrow it. It really has been a, a great experience to check one of these out and play with it. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, I know there are some of you guys out there who already have Shiro's. You've said how much you love them. I definitely get it. There's no question. Um, I just look forward to seeing these come down to a bit more realistic price point considering what they go for in Russia. So it might be a pipe dream. Who knows? It maybe it's just a matter of time, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and sticking with me. If you've made it this far... Uh, be sure to throw me a like. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, you can also follow me on Instagram under Epic Snuggle Bunny. And we do have the podcast up and running uh, by two times a month again. That's uh, Modern Neanderthal. So see you guys on the next video. Take care.